Hey, how you doing micro students? This is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. In this video, we're gonna practice the theory of the firm, perfect competition, monopolies, the idea of looking at marginal revenue, the demand, the average total cost, marginal cost, putting all that stuff together, it's time to practice. That said, keep in mind this video is designed for people who have already learned the concepts and the practice a little bit before, have seen it in class. If you've never seen a monopoly or perfect competition, this video is not gonna help you. Go watch my unit summary video, then come back and do the practice with this video. Also, if you haven't gotten it yet, take a look at my ultimate review packet. It's what makes this YouTube channel possible, and it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing, but more importantly, it helps you do your stuff a whole lot better. It's got practice videos, multiple choice questions. It's got a boatload of stuff that's designed for both micro and macroeconomics. It's gonna help you learn this stuff, and it's super cheap. It's on my website. Take a look at the description below, the ultimate review packet. Okay, here we go. Let's start off by talking about the cost curves. Take a look at this graph right here. What kind of firm is this? Well, by now you should recognize it is not any particular firm. You can't figure out what type of market something is by looking at the cost curves. That's not how this stuff works. The cost curves are the same for everybody. So this one graph could be all sorts of things. It could be perfect competition making a profit or perfect competition firm making a loss or a perfect competitive firm in the long run or it could be a monopoly, a non-price discriminating monopoly. It could be a price discriminating monopoly. It could be a monopoly competition in the long run. Don't look at the cost curves. The cost curves are not essential for figuring out what kind of firm it is. The cost curves have two purposes. Number one, the marginal cost curve is for figuring out how much output to produce. And the way you get that is by comparing the marginal cost to the marginal revenue. The most important rule in all of microeconomics, you produce where the marginal revenue hits the marginal cost. MR equals MC. So the marginal cost curve is there to find the output. That's it. Marginal cost is about finding the output. The average total cost is about finding the profit. The ATC helps you figure out the cost so you can calculate the profit or the loss or if it's breaking even. There's also the AVC, but you don't need that unless you're trying to figure out the shutdown. So keep in mind, there are some other things on this graph you might see, but you don't need it. Point I'm trying to make here is the idea of these cost Cost curves are not what tell you what kind of firm this is, what kind of market structure this is. You have to look at the revenue curve. So let's go ahead and talk about the revenue and do some calculations. Instead of talking about a graph, let's go talk about the chart. Take a look right here. I've got the coin demanded and then the average total cost and the marginal cost. Now, the price depends on what type of market structure this is. For example, let's say this is a perfectly competitive firm, perfect competitive firm, and the market price is set at 15. So what is the price for the first unit? Well, it's 15. And the second unit, 15. The third unit, 15. The price is always 15. Why? Because it's set by the market. It's a price taker. Now, next question. How about the marginal revenue? How do you get that? Well, the marginal revenue is just the additional revenue in Mr. Darp is the idea. So the marginal revenue is 15, right? If I sell another unit for $15, I make another $15 of additional revenue. The marginal revenue is 15. Now I have enough information to do some calculations. So we're using the chart, not the graphs here. Let's see if you can calculate right here. If this is a perfect competitive firm and the price is 15, identify the output, the total revenue, total cost, and calculate the profit, okay? Calculate each one of these, pause the video, see if you can do it, and then start back up. We'll go over the answers and I'll give you more practice questions, okay? Good luck. So like I said before, to figure out output, you have to look at the marginal cost. Now we don't have a marginal cost curve here, but we do have the same idea. Look at the marginal cost. 11, 3, 4, 8, 14, 25, 40. It's going down and up, just like the graph we saw earlier. So keep in mind, whether it's the graph or the chart, it's all just the same stuff. The marginal cost goes down and up. And the ATC, if you look at that, also goes down and goes up. So if you were to plot these numbers, you'd come up with the same exact graphs that I showed you in the beginning of this video. And like I said before, to figure out the output, you look at where the marginal revenue hits the marginal marginal cost. Marginal cost hits marginal revenue at five units. So five units is the profit maximizing output. Notice they don't actually have to equal here, right? It's not 15 equals 15. It's an idea. MR equals MC is an idea that helps you understand produce where MR hits MC or equals MC without the MC going over. So you would never produce six units because the six unit costs an additional $25, but you only get $15 of additional revenue. So you understand this, you've seen this before, the output's five. The price is 15, the output is five units. And since the price times the quantity equals the total revenue, that means 15 times five is the total revenue of 75. So $75 total revenue coming in. Now the costs, well, the average total cost of producing five units is $8. Each one on average costs $8. If I produce five, that's a total of $40 total cost. Subtract $40 from 75 gives you the profit, 
$35 profit. Did you get it? If you didn't, go back and watch my perfect competition practice videos that I have in the unit summary playlist. So take a look at those, but I'm gonna keep going here. Take a look. Now let's make this a monopoly. Instead of being perfect competition where the price is set at 15, let's make a monopoly so they can charge any price they want because they're a price maker. If the price is uh, all the way up there at 29, no one's gonna buy it, so the coin demand is zero. And as they lower their price, the quantity people buy increases, which totally makes sense. That's the law of demand. So as they lower the price down to 26 or 23 or 20, 17, more and more people wanna buy this product. Great, now we have to calculate the marginal revenue. So by yourself, fill out that marginal revenue uh, column, see if you can actually figure that out. Now notice, if you compare perfect competition to a monopoly, we have a different marginal revenue curve. Before, the marginal revenue curve was equal to the demand. It was 15, 15. If I sell another unit for 15, I get 15 more additional revenue. But that's not what's happening here. In fact, the marginal revenue curve is falling, right? Each additional unit I'm selling, I'm getting less and less additional revenue from that unit. If this is a non-price discriminating monopoly, it means they can't charge different people different prices for the product, they've got to sell every single unit at the same price to each person, then the marginal revenue is going to look different than it looked before. If I want to sell another unit, I got to lower the price of the next unit and all the other units I could have sold for a higher price. So let me put in a total revenue column real quick here. Uh, you probably have the right answer, but let me show you why it's the right answer. Here's the total revenue column, which is the price times the quantity. I've done the calculations for you. The marginal revenue is just the change in the total revenue. Of course, when I sell the first unit for $26, the price is 26, my additional revenue is 26. No big change there, that's the same. Right? It all starts at the same spot. But when I sell another unit for 23, the additional revenue is not 23, it's only 20, because I lose $3 on the other unit. The first unit I could have sold for 26 but now I'm only selling it for 23 because I'm not price discriminating. Now that we have the price, the marginal revenue, put back the cost curves, here's your questions. If this is a unregulated, non-price discriminating monopoly, try to figure out how much is the output, the price, total revenue, total cost, and profit, okay? Try it on your own, pause the video, good luck. Just like last time, you have to produce where MR hits MC. So we've got the marginal revenue. We already had the marginal cost. This firm's gonna produce four units. Four units is where MR hits MC. And when they produce four units, the chart says people are willing to pay $17. So the price is $17. The output is four. There we go. Now, total revenue, same process as before. It's exactly the same equation. It's not different from monopoly. It's price times the quantity. The price we said is 17, the quantity is four, so the total revenue is 68. The total cost, same process, except we're looking at the average total cost of $6.50. So in this case, they're producing four units and they cost $6.50 each. $6.50 times four is $26 of total cost, and then total revenue minus total cost gives you the profit of $42. So $42 is the profit. How'd you do? Did you get it right? Again, if you're a little confused or lost, keep in mind, it's the exact same process every single time. It doesn't matter what the revenue curves look like. It doesn't matter if perfect competition or monopoly. You follow the same rules. Figure out where MR hits MC. Where is this firm producing profit or maximizing profit where MR hits MC? And then what's the price? What do people want to pay? Right? If it's price taker, it's the price is set. If it's a monopoly, just look at the chart or look at the graph. It tells you here's the price people want to pay for that quantity. And then price times quantity, total revenue, uh, the average total cost times the quantity gives you the total cost. Subtract that total cost from that total revenue and boom, you've got the profit. So I'm assuming you understand that. So let's ask you another question. Assume instead of you know an unregulated monopoly, let's make it a regulated monopoly and the government sets a price ceiling where there's socially optimal price and quantity. So the government comes in, sets a price ceiling, makes it a regulated monopoly, identify the price and quantity that would exist if the government regulates this monopoly, making it socially optimal. Figure this one out, you need to understand a little bit of vocab and understand what socially optimal means. Socially optimal is the idea where the price equals the marginal cost, where what people value it and what people are willing to pay for this is exactly how much that last additional unit costs. So right here, you can look at the price column and you can look at the marginal cost column. They are equal at five units, where the price equals the marginal cost 
is at five units, that is a socially optimal output. So five is the output and the price is just 14. D did you get that? If not, keep in mind, you already knew the answer if you can do it on the graph. So if on the graph I gave you is, okay, where is the socially optimal quantity? You would identify where the marginal cost hit the demand curve. It's the same thing with the chart. It's just the same idea. When is the price and the marginal cost equal? Here's another question for you, but this one's a little more open-ended. The question is simple, but the answers may be tough. Is this a natural monopoly? The numbers I've given you, just by looking at it, can you tell, is it a natural monopoly? Yes or no, and then why, all right? Give you some time on this one, pause the video, and really think about it. Good luck. Hmm. Just like the last question, you need some vocab to understand even how to answer it. You have to know what a natural monopoly is. Now, a natural monopoly is the idea that there's only one firm that should produce this because they have the lowest cost. They have the economies of scale, and it makes sense to only have one firm produce this. So are they a natural monopoly? The answer is no, they are not. And the reason why is if you look at the ATC at the quantity five, we said the socially optimal quantity is five, the ATC is actually going up. It's not going down. So look at the actual numbers here. The ATC is, is rising at five units, right? It went from a low of six, then six and a half, then eight at five units. It notes it's going up. It would be a natural monopoly if the ATC was like 11, seven, six, four, three, two. If the ATC was still falling, that would be a natural monopoly at the socially optimal quantity. But it's not, therefore it's not a natural monopoly. Now I know I'm going quick here, but keep in mind you should be pausing this video, practicing, seeing if you're getting it, and then go over my answers, maybe rewatch what I say over again. I'm going fast, I know that, and I have one more question for you. See if you got it. Let's assume instead of being perfect competition or a non-price discriminating monopoly, let's assume that this actually represents a price discriminating monopoly. In other words, the price is here, just as before, same numbers, except you have to figure out what's the marginal revenue if this firm can price discriminate, perfectly price discriminate. So again, pause the video and see if you can calculate the marginal revenue and you understand why you got the marginal revenue that comes with this type of monopoly. The difference between a non-price discriminating monopoly and a price discriminating monopoly is the idea that when they sell another unit, they don't have to lower the price of the other units they could have sold for a higher price. In other words, they can charge one person you know, $26. They can charge another person $23, another person $20. The other monopoly we looked at, they couldn't do that. They had to charge everyone $20. If they lower the price to 20, everyone pays 20. They lower the price down to 14, everyone pays 14. That's not what's happening here. So when they sell another unit, for $26, they make $26 additional revenue. When they sell another unit for $23, they don't lose those $3 they could have sold to the, fir the first unit at a higher price. They don't lose anything, right? They gain just the $23. So the marginal revenue equals the price. Now you should know this on the graph as well. The demand curve equals the marginal revenue curve for a price discriminating monopoly, perfectly price discriminating monopoly. But here's the right answer, 26, 23, 20, 17, 14, 11, and eight. And of course, here comes the question. If this is a price discriminating monopoly, figure out what is the output, the price, the total revenue, total cost, and profit, okay? Pause the video, see if you got it. I'll go over the answers. Good luck. Again, it's exactly the same thing over again. Find where MR hits MC. Now notice the MR is not the same as it was for the last monopoly I showed you. The MR is different. So we have to calculate where the MR hits MC, which is at five units. This monopoly will produce five units and the price well, you wanna say, oh, the price at five units is 14. No, because remember they charge multiple prices. There's no one price. For the first unit, they charge 26. For the second unit, they charge 23, then 20. So you can't really have a price. And I kind of put that as a trick question to try to trip, trip you up, because before there was a single price, but a, not, a price discriminating monopoly doesn't have one single price, it has multiple prices. So to figure out the total revenue, you can't multiply 14 times the quantity. You have to actually do the calculation. Well, the first unit brings in $26, next one, 23, then 20, you add it all up. So 26 plus 23 plus 20 plus 17 plus 14 adds up to $100. There's total, a total revenue of $100 to this firm. The total cost is the same as before though, right? They're selling five units, and they cost $8 each, that's $40 of total cost. And so 100 minus 40 gives you the right answer of profit, $60 profit. Notice, more profit than a non-price discriminating monopoly. And that's why if a firm could, they'd wanna price discriminate because they make more profit than they could if they didn't 
price discriminate. Now in this video, I focused on the chart, but you should be able to do all these things with graphs. And I have several videos that have you do the same sort of practice questions, except I show you the graphs. You have to figure out you know, where on the graph and what output should they produce and what's the price and where's the box of total revenue and total cost. You should be able to see it in both ways though, in the chart, and in the graph, so make sure you practice both. Hey, seriously, thank you so much for watching these videos. Please subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments below, let me know what concepts you want me to cover and how I can help you better understand economics. Thanks for watching, take a look at some of my other videos. Until next time.